And welcome to another edition of Spits and Suds. I'm Gavin Spittle of 105.3 The Fan. Thank you so much for supporting Spits and Suds. And joining me is two-time Stanley Cup champion, Craig Ludwig. Let's hit the intro. Is joins us on spits and suds what's going on big man i was trying to find my cancel button or exit how to (laughs) how to get out of this podcast (laughs) i I couldn't find it on here what is that were you playing that on your sony walkman (laughs) that was awful so (laughs) these are the deep dives i do on spits and suds so i was looking up different things And I just searched your name on YouTube and a guy by the name of Christopher Newby wrote the Craig Ludwig song. And I was like, Hey, I wonder if Craig knows about this song. Wait, no, is this the one that talks about the shin pads and stuff like that? Okay. So three years ago, I believe it was three years ago. I want to say we were in Detroit with our U18 team and from the back of the bus, I hear all this howl, and I and I heard the music. And again, <clears throat> you know, these guys, they bring their music with them and stuff like that. And they have a boom box that they bring and set up in the in their locker room when they're on the road, and like everybody did. Anyway, <clears throat> and all I hear is noise. I mean, anytime they play their the music that they listen to today is a joke. But anyway, so I can I'm very I'm I'm very good at tuning things out. I do that every week with you. So I am very good at putting <laughs> things out. Come on. <laughs> and and everything and now I hear all this laughing. And then Addie, our our head coach, looks next to me and he's laughing. And I'm like, what are you laughing about? He goes, Are you listening to this? And I said, No, I have no idea what you're talking about. I said, I don't listen to anything they do. And all of a sudden I start listening to it. And I turn around and I heard my name. So that was the first time that I ever knew about it, heard about it. And then what I did is I I sent one of them gave me the link or whatever it was, and so I sent it to my kids, which was a one of my biggest mistakes I've made in years. And and so they would they would go off playing that all the time, and then I'd go over to their houses and they'd be playing it, and their friends are all over, and everybody's yeah. laughing at me. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's not uh, it, it's not a top ten, that's for sure. So. <laughs> I mean, what an honor that there's a song about you on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I. <clears throat> I, one of my, I think, I don't know. I think it was one of my daughter-in-laws. They were trying to track down the dude that wrote it. Yeah. Uh, this obviously was done when I was in Montreal. Cause there's a, did you watch the video part of it? Yes. Just, that okay. was the best so, part. I urge all spits and suds fans to go on YouTube and YouTube the Craig Ludwig song, because there are some jewels of pics that you will see. Okay. Now wait, when you talk about pics and I, and I honestly, I don't remember, but is there a picture of me that would have been right after we end a solo picture where you're kind of kneeling down with the cup. Was there a picture in that one? Of um, that? Year? I, the one that I saw was you had some great lettuce in the back and your kids were really young and you were kneeling oh, down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I just wonder, because there's a, there's one picture I, I've got it somewhere in the house here and, and when people, you know, when they see it and they kind of dissect it, like, they're like, wait a minute. Like, look at your skates. And what had happened is the, that particular day that we took individual, we were back in Dallas. Or no, I'm mean, sorry, that was Montreal. We were back in Montreal. And, um, you know, you, you go out and celebrate, obviously, after you win a cup. And I literally got pushed on the ice. I couldn't, I didn't even have my skates tied in the picture. So my skates were on, but they were not tied. So <laughs> it was just a little tip of how good a time we had the night before. Nice. All right, so yeah. as far as good times, because we had a great interview with uh, Brad Lukovic last week, and he, Luko, yeah, did yeah, he was he was terrific, he was terrific. So 
Um, and I'll get to that if you want me to go there because there are some really interesting stories. Um, <laughs> were, <laughs> were you at that dinner where he walked out when he found out that his name wasn't on the cup? Um, couldn't tell you. Okay. I, I don't know that story. I honestly, to this moment, I, I'm sure Luke and I have had that conversation at some point, but I don't remember. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know where the dinner was or, but boy, that'd be kind of shitty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can look up the cut if you want and, uh, and play it for you. So yeah, basically he, he thought his name was on the cup. He didn't realize it until that dinner. Well, is that, was that part of what the rules were at the time? Yes, absolutely. Had to play X amount of games in yeah. a regular season or so many yeah. playoff yeah. games or yeah. something like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. He told that story along with the, uh, having to grab the cup at the bottom of the pool. So <laughs> was that a rookie thing? Because he said Severn was a part of that too. Was what a rookie thing? As far as like, so the, 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 I knew the cup ended up in the pool. What I didn't realize was the cup stayed in the pool all night. It did not stay in the pool all night. Okay. All so right. I got to have you guys on together. That, you know how this stuff is. I mean, it, there's no way that it stayed in the pool. So when it, when it slipped a little bit and went into the pool, Carbo didn't catch it, but when it slipped a little bit and it went into the pool, um, it's obviously once it fills up, you know, because it's full of styrofoam or whatever it is inside, and it gets a little heavy. And so it just sunk down to the bottom, which was kind of appropriate because on the bottom of Benny's pool is a big crown logo, crown royal logo. So it was, <laughs> it was, it was nestled right into the middle of that logo, pretty cool. So it, but it did not stay there. It just wasn't really, you know, it, it, it was kind of cool at the moment. You know, I, I'm sure there were a bunch of pictures taken at, in it, and, you know, some of the, talent jumped into the pool and they were taking pictures with it below them. It was kind of like a shark swimming around on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, it, I mean, and, and really what we had to do, I, I, if I remember correctly, we had to almost roll it. We had to roll it back up into a little shallow water, but it did not sit there all night. No. Okay. All right. See, this is why you listen well, to spits and suds. It, well, no, it's just, it's everybody's, you know, when you're, it, that was, uh, what was that? 25? How many years ago was that now? 20, whatever it was. So, you know, you're cloudy the next day the way it is. And then after years, it, you know how it goes. I mean, stories get embellished a little bit yeah. as the years go along yeah. and they get bigger and better than what they probably were. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's entertainment. Wow. Nice. So when you get inducted into the stars hall of fame, oh, will, yeah. will, which I'm going to push for, can we play that Craig Ludwig song as you're making your way up? And will I be with your family when you're being honored? And you say, you know, I'd like to thank Gavin for this. This is truly an honor. Yeah. All of those questions right there. I'm not too concerned about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get you in the hall first and then we can discuss that stuff. It makes total sense. Yeah. We'll all have a to-do list. <laughs> all right. So seven, one and one on the road, Craig, that's the best nine game away start in franchise history. And what a weekend it was. And I wanted to ask you as far as how that affects team confidence and what goes through your mind when, you know, when you lace up the skates, no matter what the case, you know, you have a great chance to come out of there with two points on the road. Well, I mean, everything, anytime you win, regardless of where it is, uh, who it is, um, the circumstances of, a, is it three and four? Is it, you know, three games and you got five days in between, you know, all that kind of stuff is your, is everybody healthy? But at the end of the day, it's, it's all a confidence builder. It's about going on the road. Um, and again, I've said this before. I mean, there, there's, there's fewer distractions when you're on the road, you know, and mainly, you know, family and kids and everything else that, you know, players, uh, try to squeeze in on a daily routine and when they get back home. And, and I think a lot of times that's why, you know, everybody talks about coming off the road and you go on a road trip, you have a good road trip at that first game back at home. That always seems to be a tougher game to play. And because, again, you're catching up on lost time with families and, you know, getting things done that you weren't able to do when you're at home and things like that. And it's funny, everybody talks about that. And 
over the last, man, I don't know if it's 10 to 15 years, whatever it was, oddly enough, as much as they talk about coming back from home, when you get home, it's over 60% of the games you win at home. So I think there was made you know, more of, of coming home after a road trip than really what the numbers show. But, but again, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's nice because you build that confidence early. Um, you become a good road team and there are different ways to play home and away. I mean, you don't have the last change, which, you know, obviously falls into the coaches uh, decisions and how they deploy lines and in what, what time of the game and, you know, who's coming up next. And you're always, you know, there's always little matchups that you're trying to get certain players. I mean, and again, as you notice, regardless, if you watch the Minnesota game, you got number four that's out there against Caprice up all the time, you know, and that matchup's a little bit more difficult because Dean Evanson in Minnesota would probably try to keep Kirill away from uh, Miro, but, and the same thing with lines, you know, they'll probably try to get, you know, their best checking line against, uh, uh, you know, the Pavelski line and, and Henson and, and Robo, which that's the good news right now about when you talk about road. Uh, when you look at numbers and stats and, and again, it's early and it doesn't really mean a ton. Um, but to me, we talked about this last time. It's it's the line of Marchment and, and Duchesne yeah. and Sagan. And not only that, then you have Ben and, and Wyatt Johnston, Dad and all. I, I mean, so you're the opposing coach. And if you're going through and you're looking and you're kind of going, okay, we gotta, we're gonna try to get our, our top line against this line, or what are we gonna do? We're like, wait a minute. And that's exactly what Jim Noah's going for. And and again, I don't I don't want to dismiss what what Smith has done and, and you know Sam Steele's come in and been really good and you know and and Radic. So that now you're talking about balance up front and and that's why you can you can win on the road because match up go ahead match up you know we're not too concerned i mean if you're trying to take away our our line our more most dangerous offensive line with your best checking line pick your poison and, and i think that's one of the biggest reasons is because however you want to number your lines one two three or whatever but you know from an offensive standpoint and and if you go down and if you look at, if you go hints Johnston Duchesne, right now, uh, the, the order is not one two three for me. Right, it's all it's maybe one A B and C, and it and I and I think that's what makes it nice for the coaches. They're like, okay, go ahead, match up against that line. We'll just send this line out next. We're good. You you always like to see players develop, and I think we'd all be satisfied if we got another year that Wyatt Johnston had last year, but. Are you seeing things where his game has gone to the next level? Because it is truly remarkable the start he's off to. Well, he's a driver. And, and every line, for me, we, we try to, and again, I've talked about this before also. Uh, you know, I think when, when you put lines together, you kind of get two guys. You get a pair. Two of the three are a pair. Some, you know, chemistry, whatever it may be, speed, passing ability, passing, scoring, however you want to look. And then you try to find the third guy to complement those two. And, but what Wyatt is and Duchesne and Rupe, they're all drivers. They're drivers of the line. And, and they, what the, that, that's my opinion. They drive those lines. Duchesne with his speed and his stick handling ability. Wyatt, the things that he can do. Hints with his speed. They drive things. They drive it into the offensive zone. They create space for the other guys. And and when I mean, you talk about hints. I mean, with his speed, he goes into the zone. And 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 then with Wyatt, you know, it, it, for him, I think it's confidence. I mean, he's gotten through that first year and kind of feeling it out. And you know, all the tutoring he's gotten from living with Joe Pavelski. And I'm, I'm sure it's like a you know, it's like classes in session when we get back home or in the morning before morning skate. And, and so all of those things that I believe that that Joe Pavelski has been able to do, whether he is speaking with Wyatt on a regular basis or just Wyatt is watching how Joe goes about being a professional, is all paying off. And, and of course, he's got loads of skill. And he is no fear of going to the net. And he makes the right plays at the right time. So, you know, again, the, the future – is very, very bright for Wyatt Johnston. And, and again, not a big kid, uh, but in today's game, 
he's an effective one, but there, there is a, there's a lot of balance going on in, in the top four, regardless of who's in or out of the lineup for the stars. What did you think of the Harley hit that happened late in the second period? He didn't return. Um, yeah. And is that something, you know, similar to, I mean, it seems like ages ago where the icing rule changed and you had to deal with that throughout your career. And that has saved a lot of injuries as a defenseman. Is there something that can be done to prevent what happened to Harley? And it seems like so many others. In my opinion, no, because the game's so fast. Um, I don't look at it at it as a dirty hit. Yeah, I didn't, I, I, I didn't see it as a dirty hit. Um, may, and, and sometimes you you do have to put some responsibility on, on the player that's going in first. I mean, did did Thomas see him? Did he understand you know what shoulder he was off of? Did he put himself in a tough position? by going directly into the board. Should he have should he have kind of absorbed uh I believe it was Duhame that 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 it was that hit him, but but should he absorb some of that initial contact where you can kind of slow up, you can keep him on your back and you go in with maybe a little bit more control. Um so you know and again I I think everybody just hopes that that Harley's fine. Um I haven't heard any news on on if there was going to be any supplemental discipline you know here on maybe there was already something that came out and said that there would be none it's been a couple days now yeah i would assume we haven't heard anything means nothing else is going to happen they've given them you know they went back and looked at it and you know they they gave him what he felt should be the punishment and you could Um, see the immediate frustration in his face like it yeah. wasn't. Well, like, I know it, it was. There was, in my opinion, yeah. there was no intent, intent there to injure. I just, I just think it's a, it's, it's a result of the speed of the game. And, and you know what? Here's the other thing. And, and this is this. I mean, I'm, I've got the NHL channel, and I'm just watching a hit from behind right now too. <laughs> it is just a two minute penalty. Um, <laughs> but, but if you go back in the day, you know they they've taken a lot of they they've gotten really uh, tight on a lot of rules, right? And they've tightened. Yep the hooking, the holding, the interference, and all that kind of stuff. They, they've tightened up on that stuff because they want the game to be what the game is now, where speed and skill is on display. But back in the day, somebody could have held that guy up. You could have – I would have stepped in – if that was my partner, or it probably wouldn't be me going into the corner there with a partner, but if that was a forward going into there – Somebody, one of our defense would have been over there and we would have slowed that guy down. We would try to buy a little bit of time um, for him to get get to the puck. But again, you know, it's it's tough now for players to even try to do that because they call everything, you know, everything that they see. It seems like on any given night they're, they're calling an interference call or a little hooking or something like that when you wish they could just understand, hey, it's a fast game. We're just trying to protect our own. Right. So. You know, and again, I, I, again, it's, it's, it's a hit that happened. It's a, it's a tough one when, when Harley goes, I, I'm, do I, did I get it right? Do I remember right? Did he hit his, his cheek or whatever it was on the dasher board? Is that kind of where it looked like he hit? Yeah, it was kind of like nose cheek. Uh, it was, uh, but it wasn't on the glass. It was low enough. It was on right, the board. Yeah. So it was yeah. More on yeah, the dasher. Yeah. yeah caught, that's, caught it under the face. That's mask. The spot usually where you get that and you're going to get a, a pretty good cut. And hopefully he doesn't have, like a, a fractured orbital or anything, you know, it's just a cut. You know, I, I hope I haven't heard anything, so I'm not really, I'm not sure. What well, it, as we, of- as we talk just a couple of minutes ago, the stars took the ice for morning skate and Thomas Harley did not come out for the skate. So no Tom, yeah, no so, Thomas Harley. So unfortunately what, what that would tell you, obviously he's not in the lineup tonight. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, and, and the other thing, I guess you, you don't rule out today is concussion stuff. I mean, yeah. it, it just seems like, all so often those things turn into concussion stuff. And again, that's a result of the speed and, and the way the game is. And like I said, I, hopefully it's, it's nothing to do because it, it seemed like it was in that cheek, higher cheek thing. I had it happen to me uh, years ago in, in Buffalo. And there was a, there was a player by the name of a Kale Anderson and he was a, he was a shorter player, but very stocky. And I had stepped up to hit him and, and, and he saw me at the last second, he just put his head down. And so I basically took his, uh, I took it the top of his helmet to my to my face and, and broke the orbital bone, and which you, you I mean didn't do anything about it, but but so you know now they're <laughs> it's a little different now. Now they <laughs> you know they're a little bit more cautious about injuries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I do appreciate this. It seems as though the Stars team, although they went in there and you know wanted <laughs> to protect their player at the same time, you know they, they didn't wreak havoc. So clearly, you could tell that they knew that. You know, it's just one of those hockey plays. 
unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also wanted to mention that Ty Delandria is a part of Morning Skate. And I like this, Luds, because, um, you know, listen, when you're 7 1 and 1 on the road and you win three straight on the road, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and complain. Um, but at the same time, you know, I thought Ty Delandrio was one of the better skaters against Boston, along with Wyatt Johnston. And I was hoping that he'd be reinserted into the lineup. And so he's been a healthy scratch. So it looks like he'll play tonight, uh, which is good because I think Ty does a lot of things. And you've pointed this out numerous times on the podcast, kind of like a Swiss army knife. He can move up and down the line. I think he provides some nice grit. So uh, I'm excited to see his energy on the ice. Yeah, well, I th- I think what it what it seems to be working out here is Delandry and Steele are going to kind of be inter- interchangeable parts, and and I would think that you know and Steele brings some speed. They, they're kind of similar players in a way. I mean, they yep. seem like and you know Ty's got the toughness to him. There's no question. He's not he's not afraid of dropping the gloves, but um, but I and but there's an edge to him when he plays and. Um, you know, and again, I think for the coaches, they'll, they may look at, you know, who the opponents are, you know, are we going to need a little more grit tonight? Do we a little bit, a little bit more speed and skill and, but it seems like they're kind of platooning those two guys and, you know, that's, it's a good thing for them. And, you know, this, when these kind of things happen, you can, you know, kind of plug things in and, um, you know, I guess right now is always about, you know, your defense core right now, because everybody seems to be healthy up front, which is good news. And, um, you know, so I would assume that Hanley comes in tonight yep. would be Hanley will be in tonight, would... which is great. I mean, you know, kudos because Joel Hanley could have accepted more money elsewhere and probably could have played on a more regular basis, but wanted to stay, you know, in Dallas. I think he saw the team make up and, and, and good for Jim Nill for signing him because you, you need that depth defenseman with experience to come in because you don't have the cap space to call someone up right now from Texas. Well, and, and, and the thing is, is when you, when you look at him, I think the first thing you do is you, you look at, he's a, he's not an old player. That's for sure. You know? So, you know, you're looking t- typically with the depth, you know, when you, when you speak of having those depth kind of players, they, they're older guys, you know, they're guys that have been in, been in the league for a while and, you know, they're uh, kind of been on four or five teams and it's kind of like what you look for come the trading deadline, you know, you get to the trade deadline and, you know, you're looking for some depth. And I mean, if you can have a young player and he, you know, he's okay with it. Cause a lot of times young players are like, man, I want to play more. I want to play more. Um, but again, I, I think one of the things that Dallas has always been good about it is, is the conversations with their players and being able to talk to them and, you know what I mean? And kind of let them know, here's where we're at. This is what we're looking for. We need this, we need this. And so as a player, it, it's awesome to hear. I mean, when you get that kind of feedback and you know where you stand and, and I think that's, you know, that, that's a, it's a, it's a great situation. And so, and, and as we've seen, it, it'll work out to where, you know, when he comes in into the lineup, it's not like he's only going to play eight minutes where it yeah. used to be like that. You know, he's going to come in and he's going to be in the regular rotation. Yeah, absolutely. Did you get a chance to watch the Ken Hitchcock hall of fame speech? I did. And I even thought Hitch was a little nervous last night. So, which that never happens. Um, you know, I, I love the story that he ended up with talking about a, a player that he had and, and everything he said is so what Hitch is. I mean, he talks about the players. He loves the players. And what was, you know, again, he, he's a rink rat. He's always been a rink rat since he was a kid. He talked about, you know, going to the rink with his dad and, and, pushing shovels and you know the ice and all that kind of stuff so um but it i was like hitch you a little nervous normally you're you know you got your shit together so uh which is understandable i I, it was a big moment i remember doing the podcast with hitch last year and i was kind of going through all the things you know the royal order of canada which i have no idea what that is the first thing that came to mind is putting one of them them suits on they have like in, sure. in, in London, one of them guys with the furry yeah. hat on and put them on I was a like, horse oh, like a mountain. um <clears throat> but anyway i was going through all that stuff and i and i remember finishing and i said hitch there's only one thing left isn't there and he didn't even really acknowledge it he wow. you know like it that's not i think he knew but at that time he hadn't gotten the call but that's just how he is you know so but was what was really nice to see is Madonna and Neuendijk there. Yeah. And, and they, you know, they, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you watched the whole thing. And when they zoom in on Mo and Hitch was talking, Mo looked a little emotional. Sure. At times 
which was great. I sent Mo a message, as a matter of fact, which I didn't get a reply back. There was a comment made about Belfort so and talking about relationships. So I sent Mo a little cute little message, I thought, uh, but I didn't get a response back. But um, anyway, yeah, and Mike talked about it on, on his walk-in um, uh, that they aired also. And, you know, just talking about if it wasn't for Hitch, he would not have been the player that he ultimately became. And, and that was the... That was the other side of Hitch. I mean, you know, last night was an emotional night for him, yeah. but man, he could he could he could be tough, and he was blunt. And and whenever people ask me about Hitchcock, and I've always got good things to say. And and the, I think the main reason always was when I explained it is that it's so refreshing to players like I was, and you're not you're not the go to guys. You know, you're you're in the middle of the pack. Um, and, and the superstars typically, I don't like calling them superstars, but the best players always get a little more rope, and they deserve it. But you don't hear coaches come down on them hard all the time. And what was refreshing to us, myself and another guy, is to hear Mo get shit, Nui get shit. And, and we were like, this is nice. We don't ever hear this. It, it just makes, it makes the whole group tighter. Like you're, and which is what happened with us. We, we were a tight group and, you know, Mike Keen loved it because Keener, you know, I put Keener as a, you know, I'm not going to say he's a, 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 a top three, but he's definitely a top six for me from a, a, a player and a teammate, but maybe even Keener, you know, he was a role player for a long time, but he loved that stuff. It's, it's great for, for the other guys to to know that you're not the only ones that are getting a hard time from the coaching staff, especially the, the head coach. And so I think that, you know, looking back, Holly didn't like it. Mo didn't like it. You know, the top Zuby didn't like it, but they're all going to say, say the same thing about Hitchcock. You know, they, they made them better players. And if it wasn't for, for that kind of style that he had, which is why Bob Ganey got him. <laughs> you know, I mean, Bo knew the kind of coach he was, and he knew what the, the team yep. needed. When you have, what did we say last time? We had six, was it six Hall of Famers on that Stanley Cup team? So that's hard to reel those guys in and keep it as a tight group. Because again, like you said, and so Ganey knew Hitch didn't give a shit. He could care less if he jumps on Mo or if he sits Mo down for, for because that's the way Bob was. You know, when Bob was coaching, he did not care who the superstars were. He was hard on Mo when Mo was young. He was hard on Neil Broughton. He was hard on all the, you know, the top players in Minnesota before we came to Dallas. And so he found somebody where Bob didn't have to do it. And Bob could just, you know, do what he does and put the team together. So, uh, like I said, it, it was nice last night that that Ganey introduced Hitch into the Hall of Fame. And Bo even seemed nervous during his speech, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, um, which, I mean, he's done so many of those. So, um, but it was a great night. It was a great night. And it was nice uh, for a lot of us to see Hitchcock go in. Maybe not everybody, but. Yeah, but, and, and yeah, a wonderful quote. He says, there wasn't very many cases where I had hockey clubs that didn't sacrifice for each other. And it means the world to me. So. Yeah, I agree. Re really good speech. And I think it's kind of forgotten that his second time around, while it did not last long, I think he made John Klingberg a much better defensive defenseman. And I think he made Tyler Sagan a very good two-way player. And oh, I think that kind of gets the lost in the shuffle. That, 100%. You're 100% yeah. right. That's the big one. You saw Tyler start to learn how to play center in his own zone. And, yeah. and, I, and Tyler Sagan. But again, the credit should go to the player. You sure. have to buy into that. And 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 what happened is same thing that happened to Mo. And don't think that Hitch didn't see, you know, some of Mo uh, in Tyler Sagan. Like you guys are both incredible players, skaters, East West, and all this other kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and Mo talked about it in, in his thing is the biggest thing for him was Mike, you're gonna start killing penalties. I'm gonna start killing penalties. That means I'm gonna have to block shots. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna have? <laughs> I'm gonna have to know where things are without the puck. And that's what I had said that halfway through the first year when Hitch and Tyler, you know, were working together, like all of a sudden Tyler became a better player and it was in his own zone is, you know, cause for centermen, they're the ones typically that are going to have to play down low, play with your defenseman and, you know, just coverage and where to be and outlets and things like that. It's different than playing on the wall. And, and so anyway, Tyler became more of what we would call a 200 foot player versus a player that, you know, you just, you just notice going through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone.
And I bet it was kind of emotional for you last night sitting there watching the speech, too, because this is a guy that you had a very close relationship and still have a relationship with. So, you know, I, I'm sure he means a lot to you as far as, you know, what he brought to you and the conversations that you had and that he trusted you as one of the voices in the room. To, you know, I, I think I think so. I just pictured you last night, Craig, as far as watching and taking it all in. Yeah. I mean, again, I had a, I had another game on and and in all honesty, I I turned the sound back up when I saw Mo talking, I turned the sound up for Hitch. And um, I think the only other one was for Henrik. Um, So I have a thing about Mike Vernon. Um, We, we, we beat Mike Vernon, uh, who's a goaltender for the Calgary Flames. We beat yeah. him in 86, I guess it was, in Calgary. And then they came into Montreal uh, and beat us in our own building uh, in the Stanley Cup final. So I'm a little pissed off at that guy. And he's, and you could tell, Bernie, he was nervous last night too. You know, and again, who wouldn't be nervous? But, you know, at you talk about big moments and things like that. And so this is all big. But, yeah, I was, I was glued to – that's why I was like, Hitch, that's why I said I, you know, he was rattled a little bit, it seemed like. But again, big nights. Um, but yeah, it, you know, I, I go back and forth with Hitch and Nop. I mean, there, I mean, I, I, there's times when, um, last year we were playing in Colorado and we had, you know, we had a couple games and things. And I just, I asked him, I, I said, hey, well, actually, matter of fact, I called him and I said, hey, like your, our practices, I don't like our practices. Like, what, what did you do the day before a game? You know, how did I, cause I didn't remember. I mean, there was always a, a method to his madness, but like, what was your focus the day before we played? You know, cause you know, a lot of times if you're playing a couple of nights before and it's a light day and, and so he would go through, you know, how, how you prepare the day before a game, not just the day of from a coaching standpoint and what you try to get out of your players and what they should feel like when they leave after that practice. So just those little things. And, you know, I, I told you before, there were times when he would, you know, reach out to me about, you know, I, I got this team and he, how did, how did you handle me in these six meeting him? Because I, you know, I spent enough time in his office and a lot of times was just being, you know, kind of like a conduit between the, the coach and the players at times for messages that he wanted to, you know, get through to the players that, and I think he was smart enough to know that, it can it can be like a gnat flying around your head at a at a fire in the summer where you just keep on trying to swat it away and get it away and you're not it's just more annoying and I think he yeah. understood that and so he found different ways to get his messages to the team. Yeah, you know one of the other memories that I wanted to ask you about on Saturday night, one of the Canadian Cup teams, uh, 1993, uh, kind of gathered. Uh, at the Bell Center in Montreal to celebrate Dr. David Mulder, 60-year hockey career. Uh, he was a part of Bobby Orr uh, with a 15-year-old when when Orr was the, with the Oshawa Generals. And, uh, I mean, just so many years with the Montreal Canadiens. Are there any memories that come up of Dr. Mulder? Because I think that's kind of a – a forgotten piece of the puzzle. You know, you have your, a lot of people think of the coach, the general manager. I'm so glad the equipment managers get their due trainers and everything. No one really talks about the team physician and you know, that's a lot of nights at the rink and they got to love hockey because they could certainly be doing other things in their practice. Yeah. With doc, the story that sticks out and I was, I just touched on it earlier about, you know, when I had broken my orbital bone, I remember going into the office, uh, into his office the next day and you know x-rays and all that kind of stuff and he comes out and he goes well Lud, here's the deal he goes you got a got a broken orbital bone and we've got you know a couple routes we can handle this thing and i'm like okay well what's the deal and he goes well you can you just make a little incision here we take a tool in there and he goes because it, it's kind of sunken in a little bit and he goes we can take a little tool in there kind of like a spatula or whatever and, and we pop it out we'll just pop it out um you know sew it back up and blah 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 and I said, well, what does that mean? He goes, well, you're probably going to have to miss a week or something like that. And I said, well, what's the other option? He goes, just leave it. And I said, okay. I said, what, what's the, you know, what, are, what can happen? And he goes, well, if you take a, another hit in the very same spot, your, your eyeball can drop down in the socket because I, apparently that's I holds your eyeball in place or something like that. And I said, okay. And I said, that's it. And he goes, well, and cosmetically, I said, what? And he goes, cosmetically. And I said to him, um, but cosmetically he goes yeah well you can see i said doc look at me 
Yeah, I said, do you think I'm worried about any of that? And he just kind of <laughs> laughed and he goes, nope, I don't, I wouldn't worry about it either. He goes, it's really not going to help or hurt any of your parents. And then he goes, you have one, one other thing that I would be concerned about. And he goes, Are, do you have any numbness on the side of your face? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do on the, on that side. And, and he goes, yeah, there's a nerve that runs down, you know? And so anyways, I, I couldn't feel the right side of my, my top lip and my, my bottom lip. And I said, Oh, okay. So what's the scoop here? And he goes, well, normally within six months, you know, that, that feeling will come back. I said, okay, that's cool. I said, so we're not going to do anything. He goes, yeah, that's what I figured. Well, I'll see you at the game tomorrow. And I said, okay, well, anyways, 35 years later, I still won't have feeling in my top, lip, my bottom lip on the right hand side either. So, <laughs> um, yeah, not that I would have changed anything. It's just, you just have to learn a little, I, I would be having dinner and, you know, a year or two later, you're having dinner and, you know, whoever you're having dinner with, they're like, um, you got blood coming down out of your mouth because I'd be chewing on my lip and I didn't even know it. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. So you kind of learn that kind of stuff, but yeah, Dr. Mulder, you know, I, I, again, it, it's like Cooper. I mean, it's like Dan Cooper here, you know, Dan was here yeah. and now you see him with the Cowboys all the time. Yeah. And, and it's funny. These guys are so loyal, especially to the older guys. As a matter of fact, last week, one of our players, um, had, a hip flexor kind of deal. And I was, we're kind of, and I didn't know exactly what to tell him. I didn't want him to, to skate or play because he's a good player and don't want him, you know, being out of the lineup, you know, longer if he continues to, anyway, I reached out to our, our head trainer from years ago, Dave, uh, Dave Supernut. And I called soup up and I said, Hey, soup, is there anything we should look for? And he goes, when are you guys playing? I said, we're actually at home this weekend. He's okay. I'll see you tomorrow morning. You know, and Sue came over and wow. took a look at him and, you know, told him exactly what he needed to do and stuff like that. So as much as, you know, we appreciate them and, and those are reasons why they remember and he'll be like, let's, how's your shoulder do it? You know, that just that kind of stuff. Yeah. So wow. it was one of the guys. <clears throat> Soup. <laughs> Soup <and> I, <laughs> we had a, <clears throat> um, we had a really good relationship and <laughs> he understood me. All right. Do tell when I, when I was at the rink and when I wasn't at the rink. <laughs> and so there were times in the morning I'd come in for practice or whatever. Well, it was always for practice. And he'd say, let's, how you doing? Yeah. You know, he goes, get on the table. I said, no, no, I feel good. And he goes, no, 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 get on the table. So I'd sit on the table. He'd go grab a little plastic bag. And, you know, anytime you needed ice, and, you know, you, they got the little bags and they fill them up with ice and they put them on your foot, your elbow, your shoulder, whatever, and wrap them up. And I said, so I, I, I'm, I'm good. And I'm thinking he's going to put one on my forehead or something like that. And I, I look at him and he, and he turns around and he blows it up. He blows the plastic bag up and then he ties it. And here's this bag that looks like a little bubble. And he puts it on the top of my foot and um, he gets an ace bandage and he wraps it. And I look at him and he goes, just relax. So he called Hitch and he goes, Hitch, come on in. He goes, yeah, let's took a shot here last game and it's pretty bad. I'm just going to ice it today for him and he should probably take practice off. Hitch goes, okay. So that's what I mean about good trainers. <laughs> that is an awesome story. Wow. Was he your Big Apple uh, doctor? Pardon me? Was he your Big Apple doctor? The uh, bar you used to <laughs> pretty <frequent>? much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So. that's awesome. All right. So February 10th is Hartford Whalers night in Carolina, and they will be debuting their white jerseys. They have been doing the dark colored Hartford Whalers jerseys, and they will have the whites this year. But in addition, they will wear their Cooperalls, something that I remember as a kid, the Flyers and the Whalers uh, wearing. And basically, for those that have not seen the image, it's rather than, you know, the pads basically looking like shorts and then you have the socks that come up, these are complete pants that you wear on the ice. Fond memories of those Cooper Alls, Craig. And I always wonder, like, does it bring back memories seeing those Hartford Whalers sweaters flying around the ice? As soon as Hartford Whalers have a great jersey, number one. But when you say Hartford Whalers, all I hear in my head is the goal song. Nah, 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 yes. nah, 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 nah. It is the most annoying song <laughs> ever that we had. And they were in our division when we were in Montreal. As a matter of fact, the Adams division. Um, on our <clears throat> Stanley Cup ring for the Montreal Canadiens, it has the series 
each series that you win. Um, and it, and we beat Hartford in game seven in overtime. And it was Claude Lemieux that scored that, that goal and then go on to win the cup. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was always a hard place to play. Uh, you know, they're Babish. There's guys that stick out, you know, that, that were there and, uh, uh, you know, Dave Tippett played there and then, you know, ultimately, you know, Kip was, you know, here and good friends and played with Tip in, uh, in college and stuff like that. So, yeah, there, there's memories there. I, I remember there was a uh, we'd always stay in the mall that was uh, or you have to walk through the mall to the hotel where we were. You know, all the teams did that, I believe, that was connected to the to the arena. Hartford and, Civic Center. Yeah. And there was a you always had to go past it. I think it was called Trader Joe's or something like that. Little sports bar. You always had to walk by that to the rink and back from the game and stuff like that. So that was kind of, you know, a built in little spot all the time. But besides that, uh, not a lot of going out and walking around the city of Hartford. So um, good fan base. Um, we had good rivalries, uh, you know, back when we were in, uh, I guess that had been called the Adams division back when, when we were playing in Montreal. Yeah. So, um, but great uniforms, great logo, great uniforms. They're, they're classics. Quality division. Let's uh, break it down. It was Montreal, Buffalo, Boston, Hartford, Quebec. Yeah, not 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 fun playing uh, in Boston. Not fun playing in Quebec City, as you can imagine. Uh, there were meatheads on all those teams. Hartford was always tough. They had, you know some big guys and tough guy, you know, the, the division yeah. was like that. So, um, you know, it, it was, a, it was a good way for, for guys like me when I was young and came into the league to kind of get thrown into that, uh, into that uh, kind of atmosphere early on um, to understand, Oh, <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah. So, I mean, you um, guys were the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. You, know, you truly tough were. To, like I said, the O'Reilly's, you know, in Boston. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, there was hospital. I mean, there were there were tough guys on every team. Buffalo was a good team. Um, the Playfair was there, another tough guy. Yeah. You know, so there was toughness on all the teams. Um, and, you know, the the you played, God, you, you'd probably have that. What did we play, eight times a year against each team yeah. or something like I that? Mean, you guys beat so each other up. And then you had to play not, in the – back well, then you crazy. Is that out. what it was, eight eight per, per team in your division, I think? And then you had to, you know, similar to what they do now, you had to get out of the division in the playoffs to move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it was a war. You know, it, it, was, a, it was a war getting out of there. But, again, you know – it prepared us for, you know, the second round, the third round and finals and things like that. I thought, and you know, that was back when you, you didn't really tweak the way you played. I mean, once you got to game 30 or 40, this is the way we're going to play all year. We're not going to get to playoffs and go, oh, Jesus, we got playoffs in yeah. two weeks. And so we're going to make some changes here. We're going to, cause we're going to play this team. I, I am glad I to see that they are keeping that logo alive along with the Quebec Nordiques logo. I don't like it when I wear my Quebec gear and, Somebody says to me, you're a Colorado Avalanche fan. It's like, no, I'm celebrating the Nordiques and the history. So I got to get some Habs gear. You you kind of look like you are a little French guy, <laughs> wee wee guy from uh, Quebec. You actually do. Hey, come on you, now. You, do you have one of those little berets that you wear? Uh, I have in the past. <laughs> yeah, I can see. I can, but for no, some I reason, don't, I'm getting I don't currently bad visual one. with you wearing that hat and them little – round glasses of yours and uh, yeah i can i can see that uh so if i'm gonna get a craig ludwig sweater should i get a montreal canadian sweater should i get a north star sweater or a dallas star sweater well north stars logos are cool too yeah i mean that uh, that is a classic logo i mean honestly i i don't know how you can go wrong with any of them um but i i guess from you know, when I look back at older jerseys, you know, you could always get the Dallas uterus jersey. I, I don't think we were here to wear them. Oh. I don't know if we wore them or not, or when they came around. I don't know if we were around, but but anyway, um, I just think the Montreal and the North Star jerseys are, you know, again, but but again, yeah, not classic. because it's old school, right? Right. right I mean, yeah. you no, know, there's yeah. some cool jerseys out there now too. Don't don't get me wrong. So, um, but I, you know, when you, you go back to when you first broke into the league. Um, you know, I, I, I would even the Hartford Jersey school. And I would, I would say the dark Jersey, if it was Hartford, not the light one, I guess I, I'm kind of fonder of, of the dark Jersey. Like if it was a Minnesota Jersey, it'd be the yeah. dark one with the, the yellow N on it. 
Well, and I looked at the numbers, so I didn't see the matchup, so I think it's going to work out. But one of the things that did frustrate Sean and I in the past is is that, you know, change your number for the night. Don't wear someone's retired number. That, you know, if you're going to wear those Hartford Whalers sweaters, you know, don't. To me, they're in the rafters for a reason. Respect them. Just change your number for the night if you can. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, I don't know how many people actually would pick that out. Yeah, hockey um, geeks. But yeah, I could see. I could see why would they even? Why would they even make that? You yeah. know, jersey. Just respect the guys that are up there. Yeah, absolutely. So finally, and I've seen this in person with you, uh, Joseph Wall, the Toronto Maple Leafs goaltender, was at an autograph signing, and somebody brought a brick because brick wall, and he signed the brick, and he said. That is the oddest thing he's ever signed. So let's go into the confessional booth and oh. minus a chest. What is the craziest thing you have signed, Craig Ludwig? Oh, uh, I mean, what'd you say? Minus <laughs> minus what? <laughs> minus you the, say minus chest? a chest. <laughs> Okay, well, there goes that one. Um, so you took it away. Um, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, a couple of Miller Light cans, possibly. Okay. Uh, I saw. I've signed a couple Harley gas tanks. I don't know All why right. they'd want to do that, but um, I nothing. I don't think there's anything else out of the ordinary I can remember. Um, how many? You know, how many? Think Brent those Hall- are, that stuff is more. For those superstars, you know what I mean. Like you want Mary Lemieux on your Harley, or you yeah. want Guy Carboneau, you you want uh, Gretz, you know you, you know any of that kind of stuff. I mean, I've seen, I've seen people, and I, I know you have also, where they take a uh, a uh, autograph and they take it to their tattoo dude and they yeah. put a tattoo of Wayne Gretzky on their shoulder. Yeah, like what? Yeah, I mean that's that's going a little too far. Yeah, but. Yeah. All right, so the follow-up to that is, how many Brett Hall signatures are there in Dallas-Fort Worth that are actually Craig Ludwig? <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad for the little kids that come up. I, I don't, I, I think it's, it's, you know, if the parents with them, I, I'd say something, but, but I just feel bad for the kids, and I can do it pretty good. So I, I want them leaving the game and thinking that Brett Hall signed it. I don't <laughs> like doing that too much, but um, you know, there, there's been a couple times. So <laughs> I'll just say that I witnessed it once, and uh, it was a beautiful thing. She was too drunk, and she said, "Are you Brett Hall?" And you just looked up and you said, "Sure." <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so it's yeah, a, as long as they leave happy, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Hey, we have. I just wanted to let Spitz and Suds listeners know. Um, that next week, the day before Thanksgiving, is our midday show annual peace thon And one of the things is is dinner with Craig Ludwig. And I will be along. And it's really fun. You get a free dinner, and you just watch Craig tool on me for three hours. So I walk out really sad. But, you know, hey, it's for a good cause. Right, Craig? Yeah, it's, it's, I enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, the... <laughs> You know, like coming down hard on you a little bit, but if you just wouldn't say some of the dumb things that you normally say, oh, there would be no reason to. Man, yeah, yeah. So, I, but I, it, it, yeah, no, it's a, it's a good. Uh, do we have a spot picked out where we're going yet, or what's that all about? Well, you know, we're looking at Hurtado's Barbecue, which is some of the best barbecue in DFW, buddy. Yeah, there was one. There was one here in uh, right across the street here in Little Elm, yeah. and uh, it lasted uh, less than a year. Oh well. And, but again, you know, it's a little different out here than downtown or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're looking at that and then we'll have our Jared Sandler swing for a cause as well. So that'll be another dinner. So raise. Oh, I was thinking that was the same one. Okay. Oh, what? Wait oh. a second. Which one am I getting into here? You now? got two dinners with me this year. This is my way. Oh, what this the is... hell? You slid that one in there. Uh, this you is... just did that on purpose to me. I didn't know anything about this. This other one. This, <laughs> first one. this is my way to hang out with you is doing. All yeah. What happened there? Dinners. Wait, what, what, what is the, how are people coming to have to listen to you for three hours again? <laughs> So there are two ways. Next week oh, is my. one. It's a fundraiser for a terrific cause. And uh, it's the KNC Masterpiece. And they do an all-day Is this your charity we're doing this for? <laughs> no, no. 
No, huh? no, 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 no. That will be Can another day. Can you explain a little more to the listeners what this this deal is about? Yes, absolutely. So, so 100% of the proceeds next Wednesday goes to My Possibilities. My Possibilities is an amazing nonprofit out of uh, Plano, I believe, and basically for people that are mentally capable, teenagers and adults, they help give them and teach them the skills they need so that they can go into the workforce or um, also they can do work at my possibilities. So it basically gives them a lot of inspiration um, that they can be like everyone else. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and then Jared's Swing for the Cause is Mm -hmm. um, in December, and that nonprofit, which I'm a proud board member of, supports um, children that also are mentally capable that can't play sports like everyone else, and it gives them the chance to do activities like horseback riding, play tennis, uh, Miracle League. Uh, we've donated a lot of money so kids can play you know, t-ball, and basically it puts them on the same playing field um, with others. So I think that's a wonderful cause as well. So both uh, basically uh, helps mentally capable people you know, get out and about and teach skills and get their mind working. And it's, it's special in both causes. Absolutely. Good job. Love it. Yeah. Look forward to the, look and forward to both of them. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. Those dinners seriously are always fun. I will never forget the one story where Craig and I are hanging. It was at Lava Cantina and we had a big group and Big E always bids, um, uh, Biggie's a big supporter of yours. And um, so you're in the middle of a story and one guy has to get up because he has to go see his family. <laughs> and mid sentence, you stopped and you said, where do you think you're going? And the guy said, well, I have to go see my family. And Craig's response was sit your ass down. We're not done yet. And this poor guy sheepishly sits back down. The table is roaring, and he stays for about another hour, hour and a half. You probably have no idea how many times, unfortunately, I've done that to our players (laughs) when we were at, you know, we have our own little ways of having team get-togethers and, you know, go out after practice and stuff like that. And I'm sure I've gotten uh, a few uh, teammates in, in trouble, but that's okay. They'd say, well, Ludwig, you know, Ludwig, Ludwig did that or did this or made that. And at the end of the day, I hope their wives were smart enough to say, listen, you pick him or me. So, uh, and fortunately they probably all made the right decision, <laughs> but yeah, it's been, yeah, they don't have to stay. Not like I didn't have a rope around the guy's leg or nothing like that. I was just trying to make them feel guilty and apparently it worked. <laughs> well, the stories start flowing. The Miller lights start flowing. I mean, it is seriously a great night. I really enjoy like, you know, yeah, it goes from PG to R quick, real fast. Quick. It's like every like unfiltered. Like if you think this podcast is unfiltered, it's five times more than that. So it's uh it's good. I'm excited to raise money for uh, two great causes. So you are a beast, my friend. How's the hockey team doing this year? Uh we're you know, we're good. Um I think we're in the we're ranked in the top fifteen at this current moment which is good out of a couple hundred i guess it is so eh, the rankings don't mean a much you know until you if you make it to nationals things like that but you know it, it's good motivation and uh but we got a good group this year they you know they they want to learn and um so you know it's work in progress all the time we're headed to uh uh detroit we'll be in detroit this weekend so um, nice. we'll see how we do we got we have some i think we got three good teams that we're going to play there so we'll see how we do that's the great craig ludwig i should have played the song again Craig Ludwig. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, the next time you play that song on a podcast, the only thing you're going to hear from me is click. <laughs> hey, you got to admit my intros this year. I'm trying to bring the creativity to the table. <laughs> yeah. You know how many people are probably going to tune out as soon as they hear that? They're not going to listen to the podcast. This oh, it's just going to be, oh, they love you. They absolutely God. love you. You're a beast, my friend. And we will uh, talk to you uh, later on. All right. Later. All right. See you, Craig. That's Craig Ludwig. And guess what, folks? Spits and Suds is growing, and you can help. 
please subscribe. Please pass on to your friends that there's a cool podcast. We're doing interviews. We're talking a lot of times right after the game. We're talking to two-time Stanley Cup champion Craig Ludwig. We're talking to Sean Shapiro, who covers the NHL. We're talking to David Castillo, who covers the NHL for D, D, D Magazine. So tell your friends there's a local podcast, Talking Stars, Talking NHL, and having some fun. It's called Spits and Suds. We really appreciate you spreading the word. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. 